I want you to start out with uh, this. So uh, we are back in section 10.4 of your textbook, nuclear reactions. So we'll do the detailed calculation later. But what I wanted to do was kind of set the stage so that we can um, note how special uh, the thing that we are going to call fission is compared to other common everyday uh, nuclear reactions. So these nuclear reactions, uh, radioactivity that results in these, oh, I erased them all, alpha, beta, gamma particles, gamma rays, um, they usually happen in a decay process. So the process that produce alpha ray is called alpha decay. Process that produce beta ray is called beta decay. So I have a couple examples of the um, alpha source that I happen to know. Americium, I think 241 is right. Let me just double check. Americium 241, if I guessed it right, then it'll be talking about smoke detector somewhere. I don't know. Isotope, radioactive. Most smoke common. Yeah. Where? The last sentence. Ah, smoke detector. Yeah. Okay. Two forty one. <laughs> so okay. So you know, americium two forty one undergoes alpha decay, and that's used in smoke detector. So the first question you could ask is, well, what does it decay into? Because we still hold to the conservation principles of. Well, I don't know if I want to say conservation of mass, but there's a something being conserved there. We don't want to just say, you know, I had um, americium-241, it all goes to alpha particle, and then it's all gone. That's not how it happens. So I guess this is how you can look at it. I think I can tell you this. There's a conservation law of nucleons. Uh, nucleon, so nucleon, meaning um, this is the word used to refer to either proton or neutron. So if you want to talk about particle that's at the atomic nucleus, but you don't want to be specific about is it proton or neutron, you call it nucleon. It's the particle in the nucleus. So we can still hold to the idea of conservation of nucleon. So americium-241, what I do know is the number of proton plus <laughs> number of uh, neutron is 241, right? Now, in the alpha decay, I think I need to tell you this. The number of protons or number of neutrons, they don't change. In an alpha decay, all that happens is these just get rearranged. So that means in an americium 241 alpha decay, well, you know one thing, you know it emits an alpha particle, right? So it emits an alpha particle. I'm going to call it by its proper name. What it really is, a, it's a helium-4 nucleus. So this is going to carry away um, two protons and two neutrons away. Good. So whatever is remaining here, I kind of know its weight, 241 minus 4, so 237 of something. Um, this is where I have to refer to the periodic table because I don't, but, uh, I, this is going to be my common excuse. I'm not a chemist, so I don't know where the elements are necessarily. I can kind of find them. Okay, here's the americium. Okay, I think it decays into neptunium. That's americium take away two protons, you get neptunium. So <laughs> what americium decays into is neptunium-237. So this is an example of alpha decay. And um, in fact, let's use this uh, as a case to um, um, do the actual energy calculation later when we have more time. Um, he, and you can do the same thing with the processes that produce beta rays. So the kind of one easy beta source that I know of is tritium. So you can do the same thing here. The tritium, oh wait, wait, let me finish here. So number of proton here is, oh wait, I can just copy from there, right? 94, and number of neutrons here is, 
And so when you, so I'm a ratio, yeah, 96 and 145, yeah. Um, so with the beta decay, what the one interesting thing that's going to happen is that the total number of nucleons won't change, but the, the total number of protons or neutron alone will change. So when you look at this, so this says one proton and two neutrons for a total of three. And it decays in a way that it turns into helium-3. So it now has two protons and one neutron. So, um, okay, so the total number of nucleons is same. And it emitted one electron. So there's going to be uh, one more quantity that we want to say is conserved. Anyone see that? Or let me put it another way. I kind of told you that tritium decays into helium-3. What if I didn't tell you? I only told you whatever beta decay process is, it emits an electron, and that's all you knew. How would you be able to guess what this daughter nucleus is, daughter isotope is? Like what principle could you maybe use? Okay. Not quite. It's the charge that you're looking at. And I kind of see where Kevin was thinking of something that has two electrons, because you start out with something neutral, and you want to end with something neutral. So it's the same idea, except because we are dealing with the nucleus, we are kind of ignoring the electron cloud. So we don't want to think in terms of how many electrons does the atom have. We want to think about what change do we need to make to the nucleus so that the overall charge remains the same. So here. The overall charge, Q, is initially plus one. So when you add up all the charges here, you want the total charge to also remain plus one. So you have Q of minus one from this electron. So this must have charge of plus two, so that they add up to one. So that means it must have two protons, which means it can have only one neutron if we, we are conserving number of nucleons. So, um, so yeah, that's the beta decay example. So all these processes are, I guess, um, what I need to highlight is that these are all spontaneous processes. They have some half-life. It's uh, determined by property of this and this isotope. And um, you can maybe calculate it, or, but it's not something you can really affect. It's a spontaneous emission process.